Chris Voss gave me a huge one year's worth of subscriptions on Patreon, and I'm grateful to him for bringing you today's video. Mirko, Obsessive Theorist versus Sliver Overlord. Not quite sure how this deck's gonna go, I'll get my excuses in early and say that I just kind of threw it together, so hopefully it pans out alright for us. We'll keep this hand and we are on the draw. Turn 1, Ignoble Hierarch from the Sliver player. Alright, and we get into one of the better creatures in the deck. The Doom Whisperer is surveilled 2 for 2 life, so we can dump a bunch of plus counters onto the commander with this. But as for now, we will go for the new Surveil Jewel. And this will allow us to look at the top card of the library and see if we want to put it in the bin. <laughs> Definitely put a Consecrated Sphinx in the bin. Unfortunately, the commander not seeing that, but we're not really bothered about this seeing Surveil and putting plus counters on itself. If it sees Surveil, then so be it, but... We've got other means of buffing the commander up. Just don't have it in hand at the moment, unfortunately. A Buried Alive. The type of card that you'd expect to see in our deck, but maybe they've gone for some kind of mass reanimation. Or maybe it's not a Sliver deck at all, maybe it's just combos and the like. And has gone after a Crystalline Sliver with that. A Mana Weft. And a Dredge Scape. So has a means of countering the Unearth Trigger, maybe? Alright, a Blade of the Blood Chief is one of the ways in which we can buff our commander. Um, I think we're just holding up double blue, and we'll see if our opponent wants to play around counter magic, but we're just aiming for the Tainted Indulgence. Bascal Sliver is sacrificed permanent to add double black, so they can do that to unearth something here if they wanted to, but I imagine they're just ramping at this point. Only two cards left in hand, and the 0-1 swings in alone, so it does get exalted and goes up to 1. So we'll draw 2 and discard 1 with the Tainted Indulgence. Alright, slip out the back, another means of a plus counter and protecting our commander. Rune Chanter's Pike can buff the commander as well, once we cast these instants and sorceries. Uh, let's get rid of the Displacer Kitten, I think. That has small power, so we're more likely to be able to reanimate it. An unauthorized exit, return a non-land permanent to its owner's hand and surveil 1. I think... We're going to hold up the final word Phantom, and then we can get our commander down at instant speed. Didn't see this until late on, after all the spoilers were done actually, and uh, I think it's in one of the pre-cons. It's actually a really good card, I'm very much looking forward to seeing what we can do with this. Dredgescape Sliver being unearthed, and then the Mana Weft Sliver after that, and then Crystalline Sliver being unearthed after that. So all the Slivers have Shroud at this point, and then Gale Rider Sliver is going to give them all flying as well. Going to turn in sideways with the Dredgescape Sliver, so that does gain Exalted. We can block it with the Spirit Detective, so get that into play. So all these creatures are going to get exiled at the end of the turn. I'm not sure if my opponent knows what Unearthed does. I think they're assuming that they get to keep the Unearthed card, so I'm not sure why they would have done that otherwise. Anyway, there we see a Necromancy, so I'm tempted to do that instead of the Commander actually, but... We can play this with Flash off the back of the final word. Do we still get to keep it? Because it's not using its own Flash ability? Anyway, we're getting down our commander. Just hold back the final word Phantom. Sylvan Library to refill the hand. Two cards in hand at the moment. And then a Survival of the Fittest will allow them a tutor, assuming that they've got a creature in hand. Should have plenty of creatures in the deck with it being Slivers. And we do manage to make it to the end step with our Detective, so... Be able to get down our commander here at instant speed. Alright, and there's a reanimate, so yeah, while well, we're missing out on mana, we might as well go for reanimate onto the Consecrated Sphinx and try and get into lands, I suppose. Well, we could go after the Toxril. Um, yeah, I like the idea of Toxril, so let's go in Tomb. Putting a decent number of instants and sorceries in the deck for the Rune Chanter's Pike as well. So dumping Toxril in the bin and then reanimate onto the Toxril so that we can debuff all of our opponent's creatures and get rid of them hopefully. End up losing 7 life to that, but obviously the amount of mana that we save is very much worth it. Alright, and that's enough to have our opponent scoop. Awesome. Playing against Karametra this time, who we expect to ramp right ahead of us. Uh, another surveil effect. <laughs> it's a shame it's a decent hand that, but it'd be funny to go in two onto a reanimate and go Jingataxius. Let's try it just for the fun of it, but there's every chance that our opponent's going to hurt us here. A Lano R Elves on turn 1. And we do not manage to get into an untapped land, but we've got a land for next turn at least. So get down the Surveil again. Could maybe try and put another land on top. Uh, yeah, keep hold of the Bloodstained Mire. 
and we'll be able to entomb and reanimate on the same turn now. So there's a Cultivate, we'll be able to see the Karametra from our opponent who only has five cards in hand now. Alright, so let's go Tainted Isle for the Entomb. Could go for Toxrill again to hurt our opponent's mana, but I think it's funnier to go for the Jinga Taxius here. Might be that our opponent has spot removal for it, but we'll draw cards before we see any source to plowshares or anything at least. Alright, so get into a bunch of lands there. Uh, get rid of the Shriek more. Displace a kitten. Some basics. And a fetch as well. Alright, a Nyx Lotus, so they're going to be in top deck mode. Plenty of mana though. They didn't go for Karametra there because they want to make use of the cards that are in their hand before they have to discard them. Alright, so Command Tower, and do we want to go for our Commander? Probably a good idea to go for that. And we'll be able to load up our Graveyard with decent creatures to reanimate, as long as we can get the buff on Mirko at some point. They discarded Angelic Arbiter, and the Decimator of Provinces, by the way. Uh, it might be worth reanimating that ourselves, actually. Uh, in the multiplayer variant, I'd be tempted to go for clones with this. Clones are always 0-0s, zero, zero, so you'll always be able to reanimate them. So Clone Tribal with Mirko in multiplayer might be good. Don't expect it'll be all that great in 1v1, though. Um, keep the nesting ground so that we can remove finality counters. Get rid of the Doom Whisperer. Probably go for reanimate on that. And we do have a counter spell in Drown of the Lock now. Got Fierce Guardianship. Can't counter a Karametra with it, though. And they've got zero cards in hand, so just playing land seemingly. Alright, getting to a deep analysis is something we can cast from the graveyard. Uh, we'll go at Nesting Grounds, tapped. And we'll go for a Curate, simply to buff our commander. And there's a Windfall and an Archon of Cruelty. We'll put both of those in the bin. And then we draw a card after that. Mirko gets a buff, thanks to seeing the Surveil. And... Yeah, let's go reanimate. That can go on to the Doom Whisperer, simply to get more buffs with the Surveil. Just waiting for my opponent to scoop at this point, really, so I want to show off as many things that we can do with the deck as possible. So Doom Whisperer comes in reanimated. We can pay two life to Surveil. An island, yeah, I suppose, can go on top. Eat to Extinction, don't think we really care about. We'll put that in the bin. And every time we do this, we'll put a plus counter on the Mirko. So what are we wanting to reanimate here? We can just go after the Archon, I suppose, so we'll make it so that there is 6 power on the Mirko. There's a Black Blade Reforged. Uh, we can put other lands on top of the library, I imagine, doing this, so we'll put the island in the bin. And there's another island, put it in the graveyard. Black Blade on top. And it has to be less than Mirko's power, so we actually need to give Mirko 7 power here. Cyclonic Rift will keep on top, along with the Black Blade. Don't really need the Black Blade at this point, I suppose, because... We've got infinite power, well, for as much life as we have anyway. Although it's good redundancy, keep it on top. And one more Surveil, keeping both those cards on top. And then we can swing in our opponent, appreciating playing it out. We've got a Vigilant Flyer. Not sure why this has Vigilance, but it does. And it's an 8-10. So 8 Commander, knock him down to 22. We've gone down to 18. And Mirko gets out the Archon of Cruelty. And we draw seven more cards with Jinga Taxius, so we go down to 60 cards in the library. And we will use our commander. So Archon of Cruelty triggers, has our opponent sacrifice a creature. And we've got a whole bunch of cards from the Jinga Taxius, thankfully, so discard a bunch. Alright, now our opponent played it out for a bit, playing to his outs and looking for the board wipe. Didn't get into it, unfortunately. Next turn, we are drawing into Cranial Plating. Don't have too many artifacts on the board at the moment, but we do have equipment to buff up our commander like we saw here. Bit of a short one today, just wanted to play with Mirko, Obsessive Theorist, and see what I could do with it. Like I said, I just threw this deck together and I wasn't sure how it was going to run, but apparently if you get your opponent to discard his entire hand on turn 2, or whatever it was, then it can do some pretty decent stuff. I'll play it again if anyone is interested, not sure about the popularity of this one for now, so I will leave it there, and hopefully see you all in the next one. Big thank you to the patrons. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.